everyone had a fun two years so far? Yes. Yeah. 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 Oh, good. You and Mark. That's, <laughs> <it>. <laughs> That's Mark. <laughs> yeah. Oh, is that Mark? That's no. uh, him oh. in the morning. Before coffee. <laughs> <laughs> That's a dragon. Well, I know, I know we've had a great time, and I know that for us, um, both Mark and I sort of entered into this um, as, I don't know, naive little babies. <laughs> um, but, but really in the, you know, not even two years yet since the site launched, um, you know, it's been a trial by fire, and it's been something where we've been learning. I think that, you know, hopefully you guys have been learning, and it's been something where what Financial is today is really an accumulation of all the lessons that we've taken from the, histor the history of Bonanza that has led up to where we are today. And so um, I think we have a lot of people here to thank for that, for both the suggestions and for being able to take us on the ride that we've gone so far. So the presentation is basically, I'm just gonna, uh, for the history buffs, breeze over some of, uh, some of what's happened in Bonanza in the last two years and then kind of go over the takeaways that we've had from that and how those takeaways uh, impact what has happened on Bonanza in the past and what's going to probably be happening on Bonanza in the future. So first of all, uh, this event, awesome. <laughs> Thanks for our speakers. I mean, uh, everybody here, John, Judy, Tom, it's going to be great, I'm sure. <laughs> Thanks in advance. Uh, Phaedra, um, everybody anybody that's spoken here so far has been um, great and uh, an inspiration for me to try to live up to. <laughs> um, Thanks to the sponsors. Um, I know there's been no small number of them. Um, so many that we can't even name some of them by looking at their picture. <laughs> but they're on the sheet, and, uh, and they have been a huge part of making it happen. I know, um, you know, the swag bag, awesome. Um, yes, and exciting. Bubbles, uh, they're going to be great for the after party. <laughs> so uh, thanks to those. But, uh, but of course, most importantly, uh, Phaedra and Judy. Uh, standing round of applause. I guess. incredible that you know you guys put so much effort into this you know your your email chain your <laughs> figuring out how the funds were going to work you're believing it was going to work in the first place you're getting people to come to Kansas City <laughs> none of those are small feats uh, and together um, it's it's astounding that this is like a real event uh, <laughs> and no thanks to, to Mark or I so, um, so yeah, I, I think that even before we're done here, it's already been a great success, and uh, I really honestly thank you guys for what you've thank done you. for this together. It's been our pleasure. It has mm -hmm. been it an has amazing been. ride. We've enjoyed it. it yeah. Good. It was fun. It. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Bonanza, in the beginning. Um, started about June of 2007 when young Bill entered his boss's office and said, Yo, boss, I quit. My <laughs> 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 boss, <laughs> boss, being a practical, smart guy, wondered, why, Bill? Why would you do that? I told him, well, I'm going to make an internet startup, and it's going to be simpler and more fun than eBay. <laughs> My boss, being a reasonable person, said, well, Bill, do you have any money? Do you know how to program websites? Do you have any proof it will work? Of course, my response, um, shut up. <laughs> because, uh, no, no, and no, were the answers to those questions. Um, and of course, his response was heavy sarcasm. Well, at least he picked an easy target. <laughs> <laughs> a little, little $5 billion or whatever company, uh, however much money they're making. Um, but, you know, why not? Might as well try it. I think that um, uh, any entrepreneur, I, all of you guys, in this room or you know, entrepreneurs yourselves, and you know that when you're first starting something, who knows how it's gonna work, but you have to believe it will, and you have to put yourself in the best position to make it work. You have to you know, be a hard worker, you have to be willing to learn, willing to adapt, and I think that if you do all those things, then at least you'll have fun even if it didn't work. So that was, a, that was the beginning. And so uh, the lessons from those early days, um, well, first of all, building a new marketplace that gets any traction is very improbable. I think my boss sensed that, and I think that every person who I told the early idea for Bonanza said, chickens and eggs, chickens and eggs, you know, like an analogy I often use that I wasn't sure if I was starting a website or a hen house, because everybody <laughs> wanted to talk about chickens and eggs, and how are you going to get buyers if there aren't sellers, and how are you going to get sellers if there aren't buyers, um, and they were right, that's really hard, and so the fact that we've kind of been able to get past that uh, is, it's impressive, but, um, 
but it's happened because um, we've had a community that's gotten behind this. You know, we've worked hard. We've tried to, you know, be honest. We've tried to make something that people like. Have a, you know, great support team over there. Um, which we'll be getting to in the further slides, but it's been sort of an improbable turn of events that I think has made it happen. Um, the other takeaway that I got from, from talking to my boss is don't ask people if you can if your idea can be done. <laughs> Just do it, and if it if it doesn't work, then um, well, if you didn't ask them, they won't even know if you tried it, and so you have less people to mock you afterwards. <laughs> so um, we eventually, uh, about a year later, got to our beta launch in June 2008. Um, this was when Mark came onto the site, and many people probably don't know the earliest history of Bonanza. Most people kind of uh, found out about Bonanza usually around like August or September at the earliest, when we were um, started getting mentioned by the press and started getting known in the Power Sellers Unite. But we were actually around a couple months before then, and many people don't know that before the time when we were on Power Sellers Unite, Mark would. <laughs> 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 position for you, young man. <laughs> um, so Mark has uh, a number of stories from those early days that he can uh, regale us with. How, how about a story? Well, uh, let's see. Um, I took my young children with me. Bill, Bill, would, Bill sent me on these guerrilla marketing <laughs> tours, and he gave me these postcards to hand out to people. Um, and I would take my children. One of the first places we went was Capitol Hill. Oh. Uh, because oh, yeah. I tried to go to places that had high concentrations of people, and oh, basically yeah. you're walking up trying to sell them on Bonanza. Mm -hmm. You know, when there's 50 items on the site, there's, you know, this is the best thing that's ever happened. <laughs> and, uh, I remember my, my children were very young at the time, and going through Capitol Hill, if you've never seen Capitol Hill, it's kind of like Haight Ashbury. It's a very aggressive, culturist, you know, boys kissing boys, girls kissing girls, which I'm fine with. But my kids got to see all that, and they're just like, oh my God. So it was kind of a neat little lesson for them, but I, they, they will always remember the early part of, of Bonanza and, and us getting out there and spreading the name out there. Um, so basically, you're cool. using them as, as pawns. Totally. <laughs> because you can approach anybody with kids. Yeah, exactly. Totally. Yeah. That's a good idea. Mark it down for the three-year-old granddaughter. <laughs> yeah, any of you guys with businesses, Sandwich just, signs. just do like we did. Get your kids out there and say, come buy my stuff on Mantle.com. You can be like Mark so Um <laughs> so some, of our, some of our lessons from these days, um, just because you build it does not mean they'll come. <laughs> Um, interpreted literally, they didn't even come in Field of Dreams, if any of you guys have seen that movie. There was actually just ghosts. It wasn't real people that ever came to that field. Uh, so, making, a, making an e-commerce site, really making it work, uh, requires tapping into a channel that can grow through word of mouth. It, it takes figuring out what your product is, figuring out how it's different, how it's better, and then finding people that are going to be able to support it and people that will be willing to kind of pound the pavement on your behalf and tell their friends and, you know, if you did a good job, then their friends tell their friends, yada, yada, yada. That never works, but in our case it did. So um, <laughs> those, were, those were some of the lessons we uh, kind of came to appreciate in the pre-anything working out phase of Bonanza. Um, after the pre-anything working out phase, we got to the phase where everything worked. Um, and that was sort of, I'd say, from September through December of 2008. Um, this is what I call our crazy growth phase. <laughs> where in those months uh, we went from, these were visitors per month, in August I think we had 10,000 visitors, we had something like 1,000 signed up users, and I don't know how many items, probably 20,000, mm -hmm. yeah, not much. Um, September we had 50,000 visitors, uh, October we had 100,000 visitors, and as you can see these are cool numbers. <laughs> So we kind of started to learn what our priorities were going to be around this time, I think. Um, 
sort of our first priority, which we've tried to um, do a good job on since, is just keeping the site running. Um, knock on ample wood, but the site hasn't actually uh, gone down now in, I think, like six months mm -hmm. since it last had a major crash. Awesome. Um, so that's, I, I, I like that as a programmer. <laughs> that makes me happy. Um, the second priority is fixing reproducible bugs. And obviously, when you have a site as big as Bonanza being used for as many things as Bonanza, <coughs> you're always going to have these like, I went to check out and there was three items and I took one of them out and da, 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 you know, and, and there's a thousand steps and it's hard to find those bugs and it's hard to make them happen mm -hmm. and it's hard to get them fixed. But in general, I mean, we, wanna, we want to have the site running, we want to have it stable, we want to have it working the way it's supposed to. And so any time that we get in a report where a person says, this thing is broken and here is how to break it, um, Mark just forwards those to me directly and I say, okay, that's cool. It's something we can actually make it happen. Because if I can make it happen, I can fix it. Um, if I can't make it happen, then it's a bit different <laughs> and we have to figure out how to make it happen. But, but that's always our second priority is getting those bugs knocked out, trying to keep the site stable, trying to keep a, a solid platform for all you guys to use. And then the third priority, of course, is adding new features, adding stuff that's going to make the site different and get more people to come to it. And so. Um, our second lesson was that satisfied sellers we get satisfied sellers. And um, our key to growth, given that we didn't have any money um, and we had no other choice, was that <laughs> we were just going to try to do right by the community. We were going to try to give them the best support experience that they could have. We were going to try to tap into all the dissatisfaction that existed with other marketplaces and give them something that was different where they came there and they said, people actually like respond to me with a real person. These people actually like fix the bugs that I report to them. These people are actually like listening and adding the features that I want. Um, and by building a product, by listening to people, um, that I think is a lot of what got people to kind of come to our side in the first place and do all of the um, positive word of mouth type marketing that eventually led us to have that exciting uh, growth curve from the early uh, stage. Um, also in this time, we started to learn that while sellers are a very well-networked group of people, buyers, not as much so. And so I think this was when it first started to dawn on us, like, okay, we can create a great site for sellers, but we still have to keep buyers in mind, and we still have to build something that's going to be relevant to them, useful to them, and kind of has their needs balanced in amongst the needs of the sellers. Um, so that took us to the next phase of our growth, which I would roughly say is March 2009, <laughs> where we had a lot of people on the site now. Um, by this point, we've had... I don't know, something like a million unique visitors a month, I think, maybe maybe a little bit more than that. Uh, and that's when it starts getting complicated because you have new types of problems. Instead of um, trying to get anybody's opinion about what we should do, we have everybody's opinion about what we should do. <laughs> <laughs> and we have many varying opinions expressed in varying degrees of, you know, a positive way. <laughs> um, and trying to synthesize that and trying to make sense of it and still trying to capture the essence of it and be able to use it, um, that's a challenge. And so, um, sort of, we had to figure out what our game plan was going to be when we had these, you know, literally hundreds or thousands of recommendations and bug reports and, um, you know, angry people in some cases. <laughs> um, saying how they wanted Bonanza to grow. And so sort of the, the lessons we try to take away, first of all, just be honest with them, be transparent and make sure that we, if we're doing something that people don't agree with, at least we're explaining why we're doing it. And we have rational reasons where we can say, we know that this isn't your near best interest or this might not be the way that it is easy for you or this might be a change that is kind of hard to, to get used to from the way that you've been doing things before. But there's, We've thought about that, we care about that, and there's an important reason why we're changing things anyway. Um, so that's something we've really tried to kind of stick to from the early going and try to stick to today as uh, something that's really important to us. And it's nice to have Alex now on the blog where he actually explains that stuff better than me. I try to be, you know, I, I try to listen and I try to talk to people, but also when you're doing like all the programming and the talking to people and the business development, the blog sort of, I think it got, it got too quiet for a while, but with him on there now, like I think he's doing a great job of kind of illuminating what actually happens inside of financial headquarters and letting people have a glimpse of the fact that we are thinking about these things, we are testing them, and we are trying to make changes that are going to be positive to buyers and to sellers. Um, and, and as I alluded to earlier, even though we're getting all these varying opinions, we still, and, and some of the opinions expressed in a way that, that can be angry or expressed in a way where it's like, why did you do this? This is terrible. Um, change it. 
and it's like, okay, well, how? You know, what, what, what are we going to take from this? And I think that it's important for us, um, and, I, and Mark actually does this probably more and maybe better than me, but, but being able